by far, one of the most impressive films of the last 10 years is Snowpiercer, the apocalyptic, rigid film about a train in which the last of the surviving population on Earth lives portrays a variety of relevant themes, more specifically class warfare. Stay with us and find out about Snowpiercer, most expensive scenes to film. This is your destiny. It's no surprise that portraying different class hierarchies and the dynamics between them is one of director Bong Joon-ho's favorite themes when it comes to cinema, as he also portrays that in his Oscar-winning film Parasite. Cut. Good. Good. Yeah. Director Bong is a phenomenal director. All of his work is amazing. Snowpiercer mainly focuses on its protagonist Curtis, or also Chris Evans, helping out a group of rebels formed by the lower class in the train, oppressed by the elite who seemingly run the train and control what happens with those below them. The film is also the most expensive Korean production of all time, with over $40 million used to realize his vision, Jun Ho had to risk a lot of resources and had to call for a film where he has to go all out. However, it's hard to say it didn't pay off in the end. The film practically doubled its budget in the box office, scooping over $80 million. So what made directing this film such a big investment? Well, we're here to find out. This is size 10 chaos. This, see this? This is death. It would be hard to talk about the most expensive parts of the film without bringing attention to the film's most prominent star. That's right, the 10-mile-long 1001 car train. The train is both an iconic part and the driving force of both the film's lore as well as the new show. Details around the train are from veteran production designer Barry Robison who worked on both the film and the series. He detailed that the train is probably the most expensive part of the whole design process. Around the world building of Snowpiercer, the train is of course the main location in which events turn over and over in the film and also the show. I belong to the front. You belong to the tail. The process of designing the Hallmark train went over first through the understanding of the massive locomotive. Robison exclaims that he sat down and kept drawing different iterations of the train's potential design on a large piece of paper. Even though it's not that hard to sit and design a train, Robison didn't want to just copy any real-world implemented train blueprint. What he intended to do was create a train that is very appropriate and true to the world that Snowpiercer is trying to portray a means of transport that is essentially humanity's last hope, but also structured in a way that the differences between the lower and upper class are not only staggering, but explicitly depicted. Afterwards, the train was realized over in Vancouver, who is known to be a favorite among Hollywood teams for producing films. The various cars were constructed in different sizes, and the team tried their best and invested the most, making the trains look like relocations with characters that carry a gritty story with them to accompany the film's idea overall. 18 years I've hated the train. 18 years I've waited for this moment. The train is depicted in a highly expressed contrast, with one side on the rear ending of the train meant for the lower class citizens, while the very front of the train houses the rich upper class train population. Most resources went into making the front part of the train look very aristocratic, astute, and royal in a sense. Possessing beautiful greenhouses that housed otherworldly looking plants, a multitude of synthetic plants, custom built furniture for many of the upper class's living spaces, as well as in an insanely expensive dining room that features state of the art interior design. It was Bong Joon Ho that I signed up to, and I would have signed up to anything he put my way, frankly. Upon other expensive parts around Snowpiercer's budget, both the film and show carry on intense action-packed scenes that have the audience anxious over the many outcomes. What other way to show chaotic destruction and intensity within scenes than with fire and explosions? One of the most riveting facts around the film's behind-the-scenes history is that a large portion of the special effects were actually practical. As we all know, practical effects were replaced slowly over time by the superior and also much cheaper computer-generated effects. However, some bold directors decided to route their film towards a direction in which everything not only looks genuine, but it also feels genuine. And that is exactly what director Bong Joon-ho had in mind while working on this breakout masterpiece of cinema. Every type of explosion seen in the movie or show was mostly achieved through literally exploding either part of the train or something on the exterior, and of course, that could be insanely costly for anyone working on the film's budget. Do any of you feel like sushi? Hell yeah, line that shit up, right? One scene in particular that could be considered as rather expensive is the scene with the aquarium car. 
The aquarium car represents one of the train cars in which some of the upper class reside. It perfectly summarizes the absurd spending and needless methods of cruel division between the two types of inhabitants on the Snowpiercer train. Even though a lot of the scene was CGI, it was still a rather expensive setting to depict. Practically a giant aquatic ecosystem with a lot of different kinds of exotic fish that need to be represented realistically nonetheless. It's a beautiful scene, and it was for sure worth the money to create such a unique setting within this already captivating film. And now the perfectly correct number of human beings all in their proper places, all adding up to what? Humanity. Another scene that really drew the attention of many fans of the film is the train shootout scene that takes place between train cars covered in many layers of snow and ice. The scene was created perfectly as most of the windows that involved the shootout were actually broken along with the fantastic cinematography and masterful that was actually a green screen. This scene was one of the best ones that are one of the reasons for the film's high budget. There are huge amounts of detail in this particular scene such as how the ice interacts in the environment the destructive nature of the battle in an ice-ridden hellscape, as well as literal ice buildup within the windows. Not to mention the fact that an entire separate pool set was made to achieve this scene's excellence. How amazing is that? The scene itself takes place with one party being on top of a first-class luxury pool car segment of the train. The pool car was designed from the ground up by the visual effects team along with the creative directors the pool car was designed to have the exact environment to keep an intense shootout scene such as this one going featuring destructive elements, broken windows, and many other things that make the scene as perfect as it is. During an interview with Eric Durst, one of the key members of the team that worked on the excellency and building of this film, he noted that there were a multitude of shots that were well rounded into the final two hour cut. Around 850 shots were filmed, a lot of them taking a toll on the film's already enormous budget. Durst stated that at first he felt they could have filmed the movie and each of its monumental scenes practically anywhere. The film was filmed in Prague, however, very little, if any of the city itself is shown in the actual film. The entire movie takes place on a train, of course. However, during the course of working on the film's realization, he realized that the location they were in helped a lot with the creative process. He learned that the film's a beautifully constructed piece meant to immerse any audience member more and more with its incredible attention to detail and level of world building. Snowpiercer is a much-watched film as well as series. It's an example on how society is fueled and how its gears are run is a great introspective look for all of us. On a related note, we wanted to know which part was your favorite one from our video. You can tell us in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of them. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.